So what's going on YouTube? My name is Meho and welcome to another React Native video in which we're going to discuss about something which is interesting going on these days with React Native with the code name Fabric. So React Native Fabric is nothing new, nothing like a new framework library, not a feature, but essentially a re-architecture of how React Native handles the UI of your application, right? And basically, not really just the UI, but all the communication as well. So before understanding that, you would actually need to understand how it works right now. So we're going to dive a little bit deeper into React Native's architecture today. So let's begin. So what happens right now is if we consider your host operating system, let's say, as Java. And on the right, you have JavaScript, right? So this is basically where your React library lives, your you know your own code lives, and uh, all that reconciliation happens, virtual DOM tree differences happens within React Native, right? All that stuff. So what happens is that whatever you're coding in here in JavaScript in anything, eventually Java needs to know what you want to do, right? Otherwise, it cannot actually render anything on your screen because everything which happens happens from this end java actually says your android device that yeah render this on the phone then only it happens so javascript somehow needs to communicate this thing to your java program and how does that happen well you get to uh, something known as a bridge in react react follows this policy not really a policy a method of creating a bridge so Let's create this bridge in red. So this bridge basically acts as a way to communicate between Java and JavaScript. So right now, let's say your JavaScript code says your React Native app to create a layout something like this. Consider this as your mobile screen. So this is your box one, this is your box two, just consider them, right? So JavaScript says, hey, draw this. Well, in your React creates that virtual DOM kind of thing for this. Everything is good and awesome. But now you need to get this message across this Java, this across this bridge to the Java. So now React tells, hey, I want to get this message across this bridge. So React Native team has coded this bridge, which just you know, serializes your messages from this end and then unserializes it at the Java end and Java gets your message, right? It's all fun and games, but there are some problems with this approach. The first problem you can see is everything is asynchronous. Now, this might not really seem a problem at once, but this is surely a problem when you want immediate user interaction. Now, what that means is this is uh, a problem which I'm going to state is stated by React Native team itself. And if you have developed applications with React Native, you might also have faced this. If you have a list with a lot of elements on the screen and you scroll it down really fast, then what happens is that you lose track. React actually loses track of its view and there is some white space you see for a few seconds or a few milliseconds at least. But that is obviously observable by the user, right? So in those cases, what you want is immediate action from the code. What happens in this case is a whole communication over the bridge which obviously takes time now this obviously takes times because these are two separate threads so this is your main thread and the other one is your you know anything like thread two thread two which is running parallel to main thread but sometimes you need to handle a particular operation on the main thread synchronously so this is a problem created by a bridge right Plus, there are more benefits um, to what Fabric proposes, and we're going to come to that. So hold on a second here and realize that what exactly is a browser doing? Well, you might think, yeah, well, browser has native JavaScript support. But uh, if you realize all these, you know, these buttons are, well, with CSS and stuff, but just think of checkboxes and input fields and stuff like that. 
those stuffs are provided by the operating system not really by the browser right so what browser essentially is doing is it also exposes the api operating system api to your javascript and <clears throat> lets you use that let's see so let's see i create a function uh, let's say abc which returns returns zero right let's say <clears throat> now i'm going to write abc well you see it gives me back the definition of this function which says well yeah return zero is the this is your function right now no matter how complex this function is when i write just the function name without its parenthesis i'm going to get its definition back well let's just try this with something which comes bundled say alert hmm so we have alert but what is the function well it says native code well let's see if we can do a document.create element well this is also a function exposed in javascript but also has native code well you know you can get document.get element by id all of this is native code so what the hell is actually happening well you see that these functions right here these are not actually part of javascript you could say these functions are exposed by your browser to you as a developer to actually render stuff on the web page you know create elements remove elements you display interactivity to the user and so on and so forth but what's happening under the hood is when you call this particular function a direct host operating system call is being made so when you create let's say a checkbox react uh, not really react your browser what it does is it calls an operating system api on windows it might be some system 32 api and stuff like that and basically creates that checkbox when you call an input field it does the same so it's your browser in this case if you compare it what's happening here is javascript is javascript your host is this becomes you know windows or you know mac os anything mac anything right but what happens here is your browser your browser is sitting and it's not really using a bridge or anything like that so browsers have actually figured it out how to run javascript effectively right so browsers have actually figured it out you know you don't really get any performance issues with browsers like chrome and stuff even if there's a performance issue there's a very very likely chance that you are writing the bad code not the people who have written this browser right so what's essentially happening with browser is that instead of like creating a bridge serializing it and then unserializing it at the other end which is cumbersome and slow to execute in some ways what browsers do is expose the native code directly to javascript so when you call stuff like document.get element by id you're not actually calling a function which is written in javascript but you're actually calling a function which is directly written in c c plus plus stuff like that right so what it does is first of all it eliminates a need of a bridge secondly these functions can be now made synchronous or asynchronous depending upon your needs and uh, it kind of solves a lot of problems just the one i told you about the scroll views that's the most common problem right which react native highlights so this is essentially project you know what they are trying to implement with this project fabric right not really a project it's just a code name so eventually it would be react native only later on but fabric right now aims to develop a system like this on the phones so once this is done this would be so useful and performance efficient for applications because it's gonna just act like as if you're writing code in your browser and you know you're basically in control of what happens when right now frameworks like react native do provide you a lot of control but obviously creating um you know native modules yourself exposing it to the javascript api you know handling all that communication on the bridge especially if you're doing it all by yourself it's very very cumbersome right now and it's one of the reasons why Airbnb, you know, removed React Native from their tech stack.
So that's, I guess, um, the state of React Native right now as of the end of 2018. And uh, we don't really know when this would be complete, but Facebook is heavily working on this. The React Native team at least is working on this and communities um, in full support of this as well. So let's see how React Native turns out to be. It is a pretty exciting year, 2019 for React Native and you know JavaScript in general. A lot of stuff is going to happen, and you know let's see where it takes us all. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, then don't forget to subscribe. And thank you for watching. I'll see you then in the next video.